Hi, I'm having a great day. All my personal information was just stolen from the Western Australian government. Woohoo! Thank you very much to the Perth Mint, who are a Western Australian government owned a company that mint uh, Australian legal tender coins. They also sell gold and silver bullion and do bullion trading and uh, stuff like that. And I have an account with them. And I was one of the 3,200 people who were caught up in a privacy, personal information data breach from the Perth Mint. Or not specifically from them, but from a third party company that they used to hold the data. Well done. Now, they actually alerted customers as they're required to under law about any data breaches like this back on the um, 8th of September. It actually happened a couple of days before that, but they're investigating. And at the time, they only thought that 13 customers were affected, but they will keep us updated. And as it turns out, the latest uh, release today, once again, they emailed customers affected. Of the 3,200 online customers, um, as previously advised, on Ongoing forensic investigations continue as we were made aware of this development over the weekend. We have moved quickly to contact the affected depository online customers in order to protect their interests. Well, they did contact me quickly. While we were extremely disappointed, we have again assured our customers that their investments are unaffected and remain safe and secure. Yeah, no worries about my uh, stuff at the Perth Mint, but what about my personal identity? Ever heard of identity theft? One thing you won't find in here are the words identity theft. No. All they care about is, oh no, they didn't breach our system, so your money with us is safe. No worries. Our dedicated customer support team has been working extended hours to provide our customers with advice and to answer any inquiries they may have. I can vouch for that. And I was actually um, emailing, talking to them uh, last night, and they responded and answered my questions as best they could, but... We'll get into that in a minute. Mr. Hayes, who's the CEO, confirmed the data breach occurred on the systems of a third-party technology provider. However, he again assured customers that there is no evidence to suggest the Perth Mint's own internal systems have been compromised in any way. Well, if you've got such good systems, why didn't you keep all your data there? Dickheads. We launched a forensic investigation when the data breach was identified and we have worked closely with our third party provider and a range of cyber crime experts during the ongoing inquiry, he said. We are continuing to work with the third party provider to understand how this breach has occurred and will continue to work with the authorities including the Australian Federal Police. I can assure our customers there is no threat to any account holdings at the Perth Mint and none of our data systems have been breached. Well, you would have been confident last week, wouldn't you? Or a couple of weeks back, before this happened that, oh no, nobody can touch your information here. <laughs> Got it through a third party. Good on ya. So let's hear from the CEO, Dick Hayes, who looks like a deer in headlights. <laughs> Take it away, Dick. Perth Mint. Just over a week ago, I alerted you to a data breach which impacted 13 depository online Only 13? We immediately commenced a forensic investigation to determine how this breach occurred and committed to you to provide any further information should it arise. As a result of our investigation, we now know that the personal data of 3,200 deposited 3,200? No worries. has been taken from information held by a third party provider. I want to reassure all of you that despite this breach, all of your investments remain safe and secure and there is no threat to your account holdings. As you can imagine, inquiries of this sort are complex and very time consuming. We have committed substantial resources to the forensic investigation and continue to work with the authorities, including the Australian Federal Police and cybercrime experts. Experts! In addition, I sincerely regret any concern caused by this incident and can assure you we are doing everything we can to determine how this occurred and to support our customers. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. They also did a video back when uh, they thought they only had 13 customers affected here and look what they did. Comments are disabled for this video. Don't want people talking about this, do you? No, but they have actually enabled comments on the new one. So 
go ahead and comment. I'll provide a link down below. I'll be there. Now here's the email that they actually sent to customers and this is important uh, because this is their disclosure and their advice to customers. Our forensic investigations now confirm that your personal information was also compromised by the breach that occurred in systems belonging to a third party technology provider. As a result, the personal information that was stored in relation to your account has been accessed by an unauthorized person. They don't say that you know that they don't say external hack or anything like that there's no details provided at all so it may have been somebody who worked at this third party provider or something like that we we just don't know this information includes the numbers of your bank account your passport and or driver's license however no scanned copies of any documents you have provided have been accessed illegally Whew. just the people who can legally access it which customers never gave them permission to do because you think that, hey, you know, it's a government uh, organization. They would, like, secure the data properly themselves. Nope. As a precaution, we recommend that you contact your bank and advise them of this data breach so they can advise you of any steps that should be taken. If you have any concerns over the use of your driver's license and or passport numbers, we recommend that you contact the relevant authorities and also seek their advice. The information illegally accessed was taken from an old 2016 database. So if you have updated your personal information after this date, your updated information remains secure. So it was stolen from an old database so who is this third party provider is it some cloud storage or backup company or something like that that had access to an old database was that database encrypted or did they break the encryption or was it just a plain text sql thing or something they were just all higgledy piggledy with the backups and well they just <laughs> somebody found an old database lying around somewhere <laughs> We sincerely regret any concerns caused by this incident. We again reassure you that investments are unaffected, blah, blah, and are safe and guaranteed by the Western Australian government. Your money might be guaranteed by the government, but your privacy and your information security <laughs> sure ain't. <laughs> they don't seem to give a toss. As long as your money's safe, she'll be right. No one cares about identity theft. And that's the thing. You'll never find them utter the word identity theft and the interesting thing is they only mentioned bank account passport and or driver's license numbers they don't tell you that everything was stolen absolutely everything and this is probably illegal because they're not fully disclosing if you actually go in here notifiable data breaches scheme under uh privacy under australian privacy law how to notify people it specifically says the kinds of information concerned they didn't tell you everything how do i know this because i emailed them last night and they replied and said yep they stole everything every bit of personal information you entered into that website Hi, Mr. Jones. Yes, unfortunately, all data fields on your account, with the exception of your login password, were included in the breach. This includes your address, phone number, email address, a reference number, and expiry date of your supplied identity documents and banking details. And they don't, and there's actually more stuff in there which they don't tell you about as well. So even though I asked, they still didn't disclose every bit of information that was stolen. We appreciate your concerns, but I'd like to again, once again, reassure you that the Perf Mint systems and your online depository account remain secure and unaffected. We remain confident in the existing processes we have in place within the Perf Mint, provide a high level of security without applying excessive burden of processes on our customers. Given the ever-changing nature of cyber attacks, we are constantly looking for ways to improve security for our accounts and clients. Yeah, I bet you are now that you got hacked dickheads we do also use a third-party facility to store client personal data why third-party data storage providers are often used throughout the financial services industry as well as other industries as their expertise and methods of protecting data are recognized to be the most stringent and up-to-date <laughs> The third party in question was selected after comprehensive risk assessment was undertaken and found to have world's best practice of cybersecurity protocols. Unfortunately, as evidenced by a number of data breaches occurring globally, such systems from time to time can be breached. 
<laughs> just an old database lying around somewhere, probably. <laughs> what on, five and a quarter inch floppy? <laughs> For security and legal reasons, we do not publish the identity of the third party data storage facility that we utilize, but we can assure you that they are one of the leaders in this field. You think? We are very disappointed that this particular cyber attack occurred and we are very sorry for the concern that this may cause you. Unlike any other depository facilities, the metal and funds held in your account remain guaranteed by the government. But once again, no mention of identity theft and there was not a full and complete disclosure here of what actually, what data fields were actually stolen. And that's important when it comes to identity theft and the customer's ability to be able to deal with that. They don't give you everything. So how is the customer supposed to know what steps they're going to take? So when I question them again on why they didn't disclose all of the data fields that were actually stolen, this is their response. Due to the ongoing criminal investigation, we have been provided with responses that have been currently deemed as acceptable for the time being. Like, as in, you don't need to know the exact fields that were stolen. I sincerely do understand your concerns about identity theft, because I mentioned that. I hold, I myself hold an account that was within the affected group. The reason we didn't list each and every details of the breach is simply that there were 3,200 accounts affected, and to list the information against each account would have been a further disclosure of information that, as you may imagine, we are seriously trying to control. You have the contact details of all the affected customers. You could have emailed just those affected customers and told them, as it seems you're required by Australian privacy law to detail each and every item that was um, stolen, each personal identifiable item. Instead, the decision was made to release an email communication as soon as possible and then respond to clients more specifically upon their response. Yes, you did. But then when I asked for specific things, you still didn't tell me what feel, exactly what fields. I had to go into my account and actually look at all the stuff that I entered when I actually signed up for the thing to find out. And there's probably more than that that's not showing up on the accounts field. They do finally admit it. We are very aware of the effects of identity theft and are trying to assist clients as much as possible. If you believe there is anything that are able to help you, please let me know and I will do what I am able to. Thank you very much. They're very responsive and kind at the Perf Mint. I must admit, they've been, you know, they're pretty good up to that point. And of course, a sadly predictable uh, response from the media here in terms of this. Yes, they did report on it, but really it's just regurgitating their blurb, right? There's just nothing. There's no questions being asked, anything like that. It's just all the same. It's all the same crap. They just regurgitate. Oh, doesn't he look smart? It's just all the same. Like, anyway, so I decided to ask them some questions. Some, you know, real journalistic questions, as you should. So these are the questions I sent to the people who were previously very responsive to me, but I said, right, I'm in journalist mode now. Please answer these questions. I know you are not willing to name the third party company involved, but are you able to say the type of company that was involved, e.g. given that you said it was a breach uh, of a 2016 database, was it a backup data provider or server host? provider, for example. Two, are you able to comment and why this third party was required to hold or access this information? Three, are you discontinuing the use of this third party service provider? Four, was the personal information stolen encrypted? If not, why not? If yes, was the encryption broken or otherwise circumvented? Or did the thief have authorized access to the data as an employee of the third party company? Were depository customers deliberately Targeted. Does the Perth Mint use third party providers for other customers? If so, will the Perth Mint be reevaluating their stance on using third party providers for the handling of personal data in the future? Your prompt answers to these questions would be appreciated, even if it is no comment. Guess which option they decided on. Surprise, surprise, they fobbed me off to a third party, ironically. <laughs> Because they can't handle this in their house, just like their privacy. <laughs> like a marketing communications crisis 
manager company. So I got this email back from the director of media strategy at Canon Purple Strategic Communications. Hi Dave, thanks for getting in touch. Please see attached a media release out announcing details around the data breach um, and 3200 blah blah blah. That's it. And it's the standard media release that's on the website. They wouldn't answer a single one of those genuine questions. Unbelievable. Like just lift up the rug, just sweep it under. It'll just pass a you know a couple of days, it'll pass the news cycle. Crisis averted. And it's just the same crap we've heard before. And here's the the steps they took. Launched a forensic investigation. Wank, wank. Notified all affected customers via email. Except when you probably breached the privacy laws by not fully disclosing everything. Set up a dedicated phone line. Notified the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner, which they are required to do by law, whether or not they're going to do anything. Eh, slap on the wrist. Notified the Western Australian Police and the Australian Federal Police. Good on ya. What about notifying us of everything? And you might be wondering why people would have to provide so much information like passport and driver's license and other identifying, uh, important identifying documents for something like this. Well, yeah, the federal government to thank for that. Under the Federal Government Anti-Money Laundering and Counter-Terrorism Financing Act of 2006, under the uh, Australian Transit, the Austrac, uh, it's called the Austrac Reporting Requirements, any company dealing with uh, monetary items, financial services, precious metals, currency exchange houses that I use, and anything to do with cryptocurrency, any like online cryptocurrency trader that deals in Australia must follow these Oztac requirements and they have to gather all this information. In fact, some of the uh, crypto companies make you hold up a sign, like a handwritten sign, with the photo of your ID to make sure it matches to these reporting requirements. And it basically says that um, if you transact over $5,000, well, you could be a terrorist or a money launderer. Oh, you've got to stop them. So, yeah, no, you can't buy anything legit over $5,000 here in Australia. <laughs> oh, no. Just take me away in handcuffs now and obviously a criminal. And I found this also with my currency exchange house that I use. I buy, as you know, I buy lots of uh, stock and stuff from overseas. And these are really big value stuff. So I've got to uh, convert into US dollars. And then I've got to convert that at a good rate, send overseas. And every time I do that, especially the, for the very large value transactions, I've got to prove time and time again, not only who I am and why I'm doing this, but also the source of the funds as well. It's ludicrous. None of their freaking business. And coming soon in Australia, we won't be able to buy anything over $10,000 in cash because we're obviously criminals. If you pay that sort of money in cash, you've got to be a criminal. Uh, you've got to be working in the black market economy and all that sort of stuff. Great. So what a monumental screw up. I know this sort of stuff happens all the time. Everyone's going to go, meh. So what? You know, big deal. I, <laughs> everyone I know has had their personal data stolen. What's the big deal? It's common as mud. Well, the problem is this should be preventable. Trusting third parties like this when I'm sure they could have easily handled this sort of stuff in-house. This is not some, you know, huge high volume thing. It's just the Perth Mint. They could have dealt with this in-house, kept their own in-house security. And because it's a government agency, you expect better. But that's probably a dumb thing to expect, right? That the government going to do things right. Anyway, I just had to make this video to just make people aware that this stuff is still happening and it's happening to government organizations as well. And hopefully keep putting pressure on governments and other businesses that data security is really important. And there can be a huge flow on effects when uh, the data is breached. Personal information, people's information security, it's huge these days. Identity theft is a really big thing. Can completely screw people's lives up. So if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you've been had your identity stolen or uh, personal information data breach like this, leave it in the comments or on the EV blog um, uh, forum thread for this video down below. Let us know all about it. So catch you next time.
And let's have a slow clap for Mr. Deer in headlights here, huh? Well done.